إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهده الله فلا مضل لا وما يضلل فلا هادي لا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قول سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أستك الحديث كتاب الله وخير هدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم والشر أمور محتثاتها وكل محتثة بدعة وكل بدعة دلالة وكل دلالة في النار Once again all the praise and all of the glory, and all of the dedication, and all of the magnification. It is due to Allahu Tabarak Ta'ala, and I publicly, I inwardly, and I outwardly declare and attest that there is nothing or no one that deserves to be worshipped. La ma'bu bihaqqin illallah. There is no object that deserves to be worshipped, no deity that word deserves to be worshipped, except and only Allahu Azza wa Jal. And I bear witness that the finality of Messenger sent was the last one known as Al Mustafa, Salawatullahi wa Salam known as Abu Qasim, known as Sadiq al Masduk, Muhammad ibn Abdullah, alayhi wa salatu tasdik, alayhi wa salatu taslim. Facts over fiction. Facts over feelings, facts over fiction, facts over feelings. If hamuhada, understand this, ya ikhwan. Facts over feelings, facts over fiction, not fiction over facts, or feelings over facts. Feelings, ya ikhwan, is something that all of us have. Feelings over facts, Ya Ikhwan, is making us as an ummah humiliated on many different levels, Ya Ikhwan. And breaking up of the minds, the hearts, and the ranks, and the souls, and the lands of the Muslims. Because we have become people who have gotten caught up with the Hollywood entertainment lifestyle. Where many of us, we love Superman and Batman and He-Man and every type of man except for the Rasulullah wasallam. And the question comes, Ya Akhwan, what do you do when we're lost in a land where we're taking our feelings over facts or fictions over facts? What does the student of knowledge, what does the Muslim, what type of equipment, what type of empowerment, what type of ability does he use to try to protect himself from this onslaught of feelings and fiction over facts? We know that the Prophet ﷺ said, al bayina al mudai That the burden of proof is on the claimant, ya ikhwan. So ya ikhwan, as we know, feelings are important. I feel like nobody likes me. I believe they're out to get me. I think they hate me. These are all things, ya ikhwan, that are actually possible in life. 
Facts over feelings, my dear brothers, is our topic for today. And as we look at the situation, Ya Ikhwan, facts over feelings, some things invented by our imagination, Ya Ikhwan. Even in the deen, some Muslims, they fabricated hadith on the Prophet wasallam to try to practice Islam, Ya Ikhwan. Wala hawla, wala quwwata, illa billah. So this topic, my dear brothers, over the years, I've been studying as a new Muslim, looking at it from a critical eye, the issue of the ummah on so many different levels. But then we have a component within the ummah that says, are my feelings not important? Yes, I feel tired. I feel sick. I feel tired of being sick and tired. I feel lonely. I feel fat. I feel old. I feel stressed. I feel underappreciated. I feel underused. I feel that others are jealous of me. I feel strong. I feel like I have no feelings. Feelings are important. But in our deen, ya ikhwan, we take facts over feelings, my dear brothers. And ya ikhwan, when we look at the situation, if muhada, understand this, that from the very beginning, ya ikhwan, I realized that I had to arm myself with what we call the qawaid kung fu, ya ikhwan, a system to protect me from all kinds of foolishness when all kinds of weird ideas and weird statements are being made by Muslim and non-Muslim, ya ikhwan, I need something that will protect me, that will give me some governance. And as you know, the, ya ikhwan, the ulama rabbaniyun, they gave us, mashallah, they gave us some beautiful qawaid, some beautiful instructions, ya ikhwan. Many of them, what they used to say, ya ikhwan, they used to say statements like, nadru ma'ad dalil haythu dar. We follow the evidence wherever it leads us, wherever it takes us. The evidence is important to us, Ya Ikhwan. Nadru ma'ad dalil. We follow the evidence. Haythu dar. We follow the evidence. Ya Ikhwan, there's a statement here in North American culture. If I'm having a discussion with a brother and I don't believe him, I'm going to say to him, Akhi, show me your receipts, Akhi. <laughs> you say something on your tongue, show me your receipts. You bought a new car? Where is it? I don't see it. Show me the receipt. Brother, you said that somebody, they said something about you online. Show me the receipts. Let me see. I want to see what you're talking about. Fiction, ya ikhwan. Fiction and feelings. It has its point. But facts are more important, ya ikhwan. Qawad Kung Fu. A system. From amongst the systems, ya ikhwan, is Qawad Fiqiyah. Is Usul of Fiqh. Is Maqasir Sharia. Is Qawad Quliya, ya ikhwan. The ulama have put these down and penned to help us to navigate, ya ikhwan, facts over feelings. I feel like no one likes me. I believe they're out to get me. I think they hate me. These are all things, bro, that we should take serious. But at the same time, ya ikhwan, I need receipts, brothers. The scholars of Islam, they brought another principle. لا تحكم حتى تعذن لك الحجة أو بالحجة. Do not pass a judgment on any matter until the evidence grants you permission, ya ikhwan. Our religion is not like other religions where anybody can just say what they want to say. Our religion needs dalil. And when we look at it, ya ikhwan, when you look at each individual word that we're going to use, inshallah ta'ala, they all have their own meaning, ya ikhwan. And they've all been translated simply as evidence or proof. But when we look at it, dalil, ya ikhwan, it's a little bit more detailed. Dalil is logical proof. And bayina is clear evidence. And burhan is demonstrative proof. And al hujja ya ikhwan, is the plea or what they call, ya ikhwan, al hujjat al-mubaligha or hujjat al It is the type of proof that knocks the brains out of ignorance, ya ikhwan. So look at this, ya ikhwan. We're dealing with facts over feelings. Facts over feelings. And over the years, Ya Ikhwan, there's been many masail, fiqhiyya, that I've had discussions with brothers. Can I wipe over my jawrib? Or do I have to wipe over my khuf? Now some brothers, they've never read the hadith, and I have. Where the Prophet said, wipe over your khuf, and wipe over your jawrib. And there's even Akhwa, the Ali bin Abi Talib, he wiped over his sandal, Ya Ikhwan. So you have now discussions between brothers over these issues. Does he have wudu? Does he not have wudu? And I can remember some years ago, Ya Ikhwan, I gave the khutbah at the University of Toronto. And some young brothers from a different school of thought than me, they seen me making wudu and I wiped over my jawrib, I wiped over my sock. 
These brothers, after the Juma, they decided that they're not going to pray behind me. And I said, Wala hawla wala quota illa bilal. So I guess you can't pray behind your brothers in Mecca that wipe over their socks too. So I guess all the salat that you're going to go to if you were in Mecca, you couldn't pray behind those brothers because they believe in wiping over the Jodah. So Yahwan is the Dalil that we're looking for. And there is another principle, awasa'alaha ahkam maqasid. That the means, Yahwan, to get to the goal. This is what we're looking for. It's called the process, my dear brothers. And from amongst them, Yahwan, there are some things that I myself, Yahwan, as I'm learning, Yahwan, as a new student of knowledge, we find that the most important thing in the process is not only the conclusion, but you have to ask yourself, how did I draw my conclusion as it is keeping with the principles and the method we have been studying? So from amongst them, Yahwan, the student of knowledge studying Islamic sciences, they are divided into two categories. Al-alat, 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 the tools, Yahwan, the utensils that a person needs to be able to arrive at the truth. Who, which literally means the tools are the tools allowed an individual to be able to comprehend accurately and comfortably all of the ghayat, which literally means the goals, are subjects which a person aims to accurately understand through assistance of the tools. With the remedy in your mind, you can literally develop scholarly talents without actually going overseas for thousands of years, Yahweh. We have to study to get the tools first, then you learn about the ghayat. So what are the tools, Yahweh? The tools are some of the scholars, they went on to say the alat is nahu. Nahu and then sarf, something I'm still studying. I've been studying this for 30 years. It's a very interesting, very intricate, very systematic topic that even if some of the Arab brothers were to sit in my class, born Arab, I'm pretty sure that many of the brothers, they'd have to go back and review these tools, ya yeah, But yet everybody in the city who doesn't really even have these tools are calling themselves mufti and sheikh, ya yeah, We got to go back to the basics. Also, al-balagha, Arabic rhetoric, which is the further divided into three sciences, mu'ani, bayan, and badi. Also, al-adab, Arabic literature. Also, usul al-fiqh, ya ikhwan. Also, mustalah hadith, ya ikhwan, which is another deep, tremendous science. And there are some people that they have something called mantaq. I don't agree with mantaq, but they call it logic. Because the question comes, are you more logical than the Prophet or Allah Azza wa Jal? So there are some that use that, but you know, those that are more strict and more stringent, they don't use mantaq. And al-ghayat, ya ikhwan, it can be summed up into the following five sciences. Number one, al-Qur'an al-Kareem. Number two, a hadith, a sharif of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Number three, aqidah. Number four, fiqh. And number five, sirah, ya ikhwan. This is the ideal course of study that every student of knowledge should complete in advanced level. So, Yahwan, I have studied many primers of Islam on fiqh, on aqidah, on hadith, on tafsir, but that's just bidat to talab, Yahwan. That's just the beginning of our studies, Yahwan. And we have to all make maraji, we have to review our knowledge and our evidence that we understand. Why, brothers? Because a little bit of knowledge could be very dangerous and destructive. Some people they read one book, some people they read two books, some people they read five books, ten books, all of a sudden now they're the muftis in the city of Toronto. They read one little primer and one school of thought, now he's a mufti. Yahwan, when you go back and you look at some of the classification of the scholars from a thousand years ago, what it takes to become a mufti, and if you were to put those characteristics against the people now that are claiming it in any land, Yahwan, you find that they're falling short, brothers. But yet, we have everyone now, they think they have knowledge. Ya Juan, we are just small students of knowledge. Overburdened by Juan, an abundance of too much information. What some of the psychologists call now, knowledge vomit. Where someone will come and they'll just spit a bunch of information on you, and it's, you're just left there with all this information without learning how to practically use this information that you have. Just the science of usul tafsir Ya Juan. It takes years to understand it. So when you go to the book of Allah, you understand the tools first before you can understand the tafsir, my dear brothers. The question comes, Ya Ikhwan, when I first became Muslim, I seen a lot of Muslims from different countries doing some different things. And a story that I have to tell you, brothers, one day, I was only in Islam for about a year. Some brothers asked me to come with them. And while I was with them, they said, we're going to make some food. I said, no problem. Can I help you? They said, sure. 
So I was, I was chopping the potatoes, I was chopping the tomatoes, I was chopping the onions. One of the uncles came to me and he said, brother, you know, you have to do the dhikr of Allah. Why are you doing this? I said, what's the dhikr? I don't know what a dhikr is. He said, it's the remembrance of Allah. You have to bring the glory of Allah, which sounds nice. He said, when you're chopping the potatoes, say, subhanAllah. When you're chopping the, the tomatoes, say, alhamdulillah. When you're chopping the onions, say, Allahu Akbar. So me as a new Muslim, I don't know nothing. So I'm like, subhanAllah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha, Allahu Akbar, subhanAllah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha, Allahu Akbar. I'm chopping up all this food. So some years later, Maybe two years later, I'm with one of the brothers that is one of my first sheikhs. He went and he studied overseas. He now has a PhD in one particular science, but he studied Islam for a while. The sheikh seen me doing this at another event. SubhanAllah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha, wa akbar, and I'm chopping up this stuff. And the sheikh said my first Arabic sentence to today, it's etched in my head. The sheikh said to me, brother, brother, min aina laka hadha, brother, with his Boston accent. Where are you getting this from, Aki? Where you get this from, brother? Who told you this? And this taught me the first time, Ya Khwan, that you need the lil, you need evidence for every ibadah in our religion. So at a very young age, brothers, I realized that the lil is the backbone of any scholarly or academic research. Citations, Ya Khwan. This is what we're interested in. We're interested in proof, not so much in who said the proof. Fulan, what well, Alan can come up here and quote stuff, but we want to know where they're getting it from. This is al wasa'alaha ahkam al maqasid That the means to get to the process, that's what we're looking for. And without the proofs, ya ikhwan, anyone can say anything. Akuli kuli hadha, astaghfar tubi layk wa salam asmaini wa jamayin fa astaghfaruhu innahu ghafur rahim. We're talking about facts over fiction. الحمد لله رب العالمين والآقبة للمتقين لا أدوان إلى على الظالمين وقال الله تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا إن جاءكم فاسق بنبأ فتبينوا إلى آخره الله تعالى says all you who have iman all you who believe if a rebellious person and I say brothers I check everything no matter who says it if somebody comes to you with some information then verify what they're saying, ya ikhwan. Many Muslims, ya ikhwan, they get into debates and arguments about issues. And sometimes, ya ikhwan, I've seen it end friendships. I've seen it cause destruction. I've seen police called in the masajid over fiqh issues, ya ikhwan. This is not the behavior of the Muslim. So the question comes, how do we navigate in these waters? We need qawaid kung fu, something to protect us, a system, ya ikhwan, that will help us. Qala Allah ta'ala, kul hatu burhanakum in kuntum sadiqeen. Akhi, produce your proof, brother. If you are truly amongst those that are truthful. People have said to me over the years, but the sheikh said, but the sheikh said, but the doctor said, and I said, mashallah, we love the shuyukh. We love our doctors, but akhi, all I'm interested in as a new Muslim, I want to know what's the dalil that the sheikh used because it's the dalil that means more to us than the sheikh or his degree or how long he studied with whoever. This is the thing, ya ikhwan, would help the sahaba. When Umar ibn Khattab had heard another man recite the Quran in a kira'ah different than him, what did he do? He became upset and they went to the Prophet ﷺ to find out if this is correct or not. If you defer in anything, refer it back to Allah and His Messenger. And the last qawaid, and there's many of them, my dear brothers, This is a principle, Ya Ikhwan. I wish I knew it from before. As I know some brothers, they used to make a lot of wudu, and then they had the waswas. This is going back 20 years ago. And we used to try to tell them, this is a principle. al yakin la yuzul bashak. You know you made wudu, then don't worry about it. This helps us to protect and make our religion easy, ya ikhwan. That which is confirmed by a way of sound evidence cannot be repudiated or forsaken except based upon an equal sound or sounder evidence to the contrary, and certainly it is not, uncertainty is not removed by doubt, my dear brothers. So, Ya Ikhwan, if I know, Ya Ikhwan, that I made wudu, and I made tayammum, and I came to the masjid, and someone says, 
or maybe you might have stepped in something. Okay, I look, take off my shoes, look on myself. These are some of the principles that hardship, hardship, hardship facilitates ease. Once you understand these qawad, it makes your religion so easy, brothers. It makes the religion easy. But you need this armament and this protection and this citadel, ya khwan, also with the athkar, also with the Qur'an, also with the sunnah. You need these things because the scholars went in and they made what is called istimba or istikhraj. They went and they took out principles from our religion and they built a system for us to make our religion easy. And the brother, he asked me one time, Akhi, you're a new Muslim, you need to find a madhab. So I went and I asked some of my sheikhs and I said, Sheikh, should I find a madhab? They said, well, you know, the madhabs are good. It's like professors that have made a nice book for you, a codified for the laymen, like most of us are. If you practice it, mashallah, you're good. And I said, but is there delil? Is there delil? I need a delil. Did a sahaba have a madhab? Did a tabi'in need to have a madhab? Did a itba'a tabi'in need to have the madhab? Only one madhab, brothers. Madhab sunnah. This is the meaning of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We love all the imma ya ikhwan. We love them, but they're not ma'asum. They make mistakes. One brother said, how dare you say that Imam Al-A'zam, whoever that could be, he can make a mistake. You give them delil, they get mad at you. So sometimes, brothers, we find that when you say, call Allah, call Rasulullah, some people, they don't like that. They want to turn to a different frequency, ya ikhwan. This is what I have been struggling with as a new Muslim for years, brothers. And many of the new Muslims, like my brother here over the years, it makes us pull out our hair, it makes our hair go gray. The religion has its foundation, its usul, and it has its furor. It seems as though we spend more time in the furor, the branches, instead of the usul, my dear brothers. So today, our topic for today, bin Allah ta'ala, is facts over feelings, my brothers, on many different levels. And I will end it, inshallah ta'ala, ya ikhwan, with this long hadith of the Prophet sallallahu where he mentions sallallahu alayhi wa and I'll just quote, quote the English. Ibn Abbas, he reported the message of sallallahu peace be upon him, said, if people were to give, if people were given accordance with their claims, men would claim the wealth and the lives of other people. Rather, the burden of proof is on the claimant, and the oath is a duty upon the one who denies the claim. This hadith, ya ikhwan, Imam Nawawi collected it in his 40 hadith. Also, we find that some other mashaykh, that they collected this as well. So this explanation, there is, <clears throat> there is in every judicial dispute at least two litigating partners, the plaintiff and the defendant. The first claims what is contrary to the apparent fact, and the second holds to be apparent fact and denies the claim. Islam is a practical religion where it takes into account the possible natural conflicts, quarrels, and disputes among community individuals where people may claim something against one another. Islam establishes rules and principles in which disputes are brought to an end in a just manner. A person is free of guilt or claims made against him until they are proven otherwise. So you have the plaintiff and you have the defendant. And here's one of the interesting things, my dear brothers. In the Western societies, if you ask them what do they govern by, they govern something by the called Canaan law, Canaan law. Actually, it's from Qanun, which means Arabic. It's Arabic for law, ya ikhwan. Even that word, if you look at it, it's been mutated over the centuries. Canaan law is Qanun, which means laws, ya ikhwan. So within their system, this hadith, they practice it. al bayinu ala muda'i, ya ikhwan. That the onus, the burden of proof is upon the one who claims it, ya ikhwan. We're dealing with facts over fiction. Fiction, ya ikhwan, is making our ummah lost in the sauce, as they say. May Allah guide me to follow only facts. May Allah help you brothers to only find facts. May Allah help our ummah to look for the facts. Because, ya ikhwan, it seems like we've been in fiction and our feelings for too long, ya ikhwan, and our ummah is suffering. May Allah help those that are having problems in their life, in every land, in every place, from amongst the children, the men, the women, everyone that's going through some type of problem, ya ikhwan, whether it's fact or fiction, may Allah aid them and help them. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad kama salli ala Ibrahim wa ala Ibrahim fil alameen ina kal mujid. May Allah bless this masjid to be a masjid that only follows the facts, ya ikhwan. But we also consider the people's feelings with that. Akima salat wa rihamakallah. Na'am, barakallah fiqh shaykh.
المشيخ ان شاء الله. حج حج